Good morning and welcome to Muscle Maintenance Within Shape Fitness. I'm Coach Kim. Today's Functional 5 on a Wednesday. It's April the 1st and this week we are conducting our exercise routine every in the every day in the morning. Five exercises that we started off with on Monday and we did them again yesterday in a different order with a couple of variations. We're going to do the same five exercises today in a different order with more variations and a little higher output. So it's going to be a little more of a workout, a little less of a lesson, if you will. So get started by standing up really tall. And we're going to do a postural systems check. I want you to really take a couple of minutes and just think about the air coming into your body, the oxygen that your body your body needs in order to perform, and then the carbon dioxide that you want to get out, right? So inhale deeply through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. And again, inhale deeply through your nose. And as you're thinking about your breath, also think about your posture. I call this a postural systems check where you think about your spine. There's something called a plumb line, which is an invisible line that runs down the side of your body. And it starts at the top of your head and it goes through the side of your head through your ears. Okay. Then it passes through your shoulders. So your ears and your shoulders should line up in a straight line. If, as I'm doing right now, actually, because I'm craning my neck a little bit to be really good and close to the microphone, um, my head is too far forward, right? So you want to make sure your head is back. People have this, this condition. It's called kyphosis. And the reason that people have it in modern life is because of the screens that we stare at, because of the steering wheel, because of our looking down a lot. People that are afraid of falling look down a lot. And so their head ends up pulling on the back muscles of the neck and the top part of the back, collapsing at the throat and off like sort of um, teetering this heavy piece of equipment because your head weighs like 11 pounds. So it it throws your balance off. And uh, so you want your head uh, literally sitting on top of your shoulders. Then you want to make sure your chest is open. You want your shoulders back. And uh, then finally, it passes through the pelvis on the way down your legs and to your ankles. So your feet are about shoulder width apart and you wanna make sure that you're pressing into the floor with both the left foot and the right foot equally. Now, we're gonna start with walkout push-ups today. We've, I've been pretty easy on you in terms of the walkouts because I've let you just do a walkout plank, not even doing the push-up. We've done them real slowly. And today we're gonna to do them for a minute And I want you to really focus on the mechanics for the first couple, but then we're going to go a little bit longer and I want to make sure that you get five walkouts in. All right. So when you squat down, you bend at your hips and your knees so that you lower the body straight down. You're not bending over. That's good. Not good for your back. So you bend down, put your hands on the floor, and then you walk out to push up position. Lower the body by bending your elbows into one push-up. Walk or push back up. Then walk your hands back to your feet. Your feet don't move. And then you stand all the way up. All right, let's try to do four more of those in one minute. Your time starts now. These are hard. If you're really good at them and you're feeling, not really good, but if you're, because if you're listening to this, you're probably not all that great at, um, at most forms of exercise, which is the point, right? The point in this extraordinary period of time that we're living in right now is to take advantage of a couple of quiet moments in the, in the morning. You're not rushing off to your car, to the subway, right? You've got to, all you got to do is get up and go to your desk from, if you're working from home, if you're a first responder, God bless you. Seriously, um, you know, the, the people that are being put into harm's way every day, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. Um, but if you're, if you're working from home, which most of us are, what you're doing is taking your bedtime, transitioning to your work time really quickly. So you have 10, 15 minutes to 
stimulate your body to exercise just a little bit. Now we're ta- not talking about hardcore workouts here, but just spend a little bit of time, pick five exercises, these five this week, learn how to do them well, and now we're going to practice them. Okay, now you're standing up tall, and I want you to stay standing up, and I'm going to have you widen your foot stance into the plie squat. And I want you to lower, so you you widen your feet to about double shoulder width, turn your feet out a little bit to about 45 degrees, lower the body into a plie, and then stand all the way up just for about 30 seconds. Then we're going to add a walkout in the middle of, of this segment. All right, so for about 30 seconds, you're about eight seconds in. So you're lowering down, lifting up, keeping your chest really high. You want to keep your belly button pulled in as you execute the plie squats. And you want to make sure that you lower to your hips until your hips are almost in line with your knees. They don't have to be quite that low, but you do want to lower your body so that you feel your inner thighs activated. Okay, now stand up, straighten your feet and close them in a little bit. Put your hands on the floor by lowering your body. Walk out to push-up position. Execute one push-up. And then walk your hands back up, back out to your feet or back towards your feet. And then stand back up properly. Then extend your feet back out and lower your body back into another set of, of plie squats. 15 seconds here. five more. It doesn't really matter how many you do. You just want to make sure that you're moving your body up and down. You're interacting with gravity with control in both directions. So you lower your body down slowly. You squeeze as you lift back up. Now close in your feet a little bit and then lower your body back down. Execute one more walkout push up. Now stand all the way up. Extend your legs out wide again and lower your body back into just two plie squats. I'll give you that number. All right, down and up, down and up. And we're going to move on to the next exercise in just a second. I want you to go ahead and walk all the way out again to push up position. Execute one push up and then stay on the floor and lift your body in downward facing dog into downward facing dog. So your butt is up in the air at the end here. Pike squat is what we call this. Uh, So the pike position is the other name that we give to downward facing dog. And if you're a yoga aficionado, you don't need anyone to tell you what this position is or give it any other names. But we're not focusing on the, the downward dog sort of concept. We do, you can certainly spend a couple of seconds here thinking about the back of your leg, stretching out the back of your leg. But what I want you to do because we're going to be moving the body in this position is make sure that your hand is positioned, your hands are positioned such that you don't mash the heel of your hand into the floor, but rather you distribute your body weight throughout your palm and the fingertips. Use, make contact with your floor surface so that you can really take advantage of of the movement without having to worry about the strain on your lower arms and wrists and hands. All right, so now your downward dog squat or your pike squat is where you lower, bend your knees, lowering the body down towards the floor. Your your upper body doesn't move itself, but rather just lowers straight down because you're hinging your knees and lowering the body down towards the floor. All right, you'll feel your isometric contraction starting to happen as you get towards the bottom. Then you're going to straighten your legs back out. And by isometric contractions, what I mean is those isometrics that take place in your trunk when you go into like a plank position, right? You felt them already because you were in push-up position. Um, when you're on all fours, um, you're you're much more, your body is, is ready to be called on in this way, right? That's why being on all fours, even crawling is so important to toddlers because you need to be able to coordinate the, uh, the, the use of your limbs when your, your tummy muscles are activated. Um, so straighten back up into quadricep or into uh, down, uh, downward dog or pike plank 
for or pike position rather for just a couple more seconds you can take a break then we're going to do a different variation today than we did yesterday yesterday we got you into the the squatted position and then i had you move your feet what i want you to do today is i want you to bend your knees a little bit and then i want you to step you pick up the left foot you're going to extend the left foot through the space between your right hand and your right foot and step t- inside and tap your toe and then return your foot to the starting position and then you're going to do the same thing with the right foot tapping over towards the left side of the body through the space between the left foot and the left hand so that that open triangular space there is now where your foot is going to step your right foot is going to step okay so keep going back and forth and you're going to lower and lift a little bit as you move the body so you're bending your knees with each movement you lower down a little bit and you extend the the leg through the opposite side and then you straighten your leg back up to the starting position and can you know and proceed through there we call these alternating sit-throughs it is pretty aerobic exercise uh, moving up and down and side to side right these are kind of interesting components of uh, something you probably don't think about when you are working out in a gym and you you know maybe go down to the gym and jump on a treadmill or an elliptical and try to get your heart rate up for th- for 20 minutes or so. Uh, and all you've got is all you've got going really is that forward movement, right? You're in that one plane of motion. It's two dimensional. What you don't realize is that in order to move forward really well, the muscle, the muscles in your, in your body, the soft tissues of your body are moving and stabilizing in multiple dimensions, in multiple directions. So if you activate a lot the sort of three-dimensional components of your physical existence then you're able to sustain forward movement uh, for a longer period of time and with less potential for injury so let's lie down now on your back and lift your feet in the air and now lift your chest in the air as well so you pretend that someone's wrapped a string around your sternum pulling you straight up you look up at your ceiling and you're going to tap alternating your left foot with your right foot remember your knees are bent if you remember this from beginning the beginning of the week your knees are bent your feet are in the air so your knees and your hips make a straight line up and down and your ankles and your knees make a straight line horizontally and then you're alternating by hinging at your hips toe taps left foot then right foot left foot then right foot and we've got you lifted up into that Pilates 100 sort of lifted crunch position to keep your tummy muscles activated as you're moving through your pelvis if you can't do that lower your your chest and don't worry about it but go ahead and and complete that for another 15 seconds and then what have we not done yet we haven't done the lateral lunge Ooh, yeah, let's do some lateral, um, sorry, not the lateral lunge, the lateral stepping, the, the skater hops. We're going to, we're going to get into the skater hops in a much more aerobic way. Once we stand back up, you've got three seconds, two, one, great. Now stand back up. Let's finish with those skater hops. So start moving to the right and moving to the left, just sidestep right foot then the left foot trails then left foot to the left and the right foot trails right so you're just going side to side like high school dance keeping your knees soft you can put your hands on your hips or your hands out to the sides for now because now we're going to get into the skater hops right so your right leg you're going to step to the right big step and then the left leg trails but then goes behind the right leg and taps the floor far over to the right farther beyond the right foot and then it takes a big leap to the left, right? Immediately takes that big step to the left and then the right leg trails, but the right leg extends behind the left leg and taps down on the floor past the left foot. And then back to the right and back to the left and back to the right and back to the left. On the next time you go back to the right, what I want you to do is 
Bend down, lower your body close to the floor and touch the floor with your left hand as you're, you're moving to the right. So your body sort of torques, you're twisting a little bit to the right in order to get your left hand down on the floor. Then you have to use your, the strength of your haunch to explosively lift back up and the left leg then leaps to the left your right foot trails and then your right foot right hand is going to touch the floor as you extend your body over to the left all right another 20 seconds over to the right left hand touches the floor over to the left right hand touches the floor last 10 seconds we're going to be at 16 minutes and that is the conclusion of our wednesday functional five workout Tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, are the last two in this series. Tomorrow, we're going to just do the same. I'm going to vary it again. We're going to do the same exercises again. And then on Friday, we're going to do a warm-up of the five exercises. And then we're going to do a mash-up where we go up and down off of the floor, onto the floor, off of the floor, onto your feet, and, and back down to the floor a lot of different times with a lot of variations included. So Friday will be the, the, uh, the icing on the, the cake for the week. And then we'll start again next week with the new Functional 5. Have a great rest of the day and please be safe. Please be smart if you have to go outside. All right, take good care of yourself and your loved ones. Have a great day.